15 years later, still got MS, still no hero. Quote, there are those of us who don't have the time or the energy to be strong, brave, or good looking, and we're certainly not well off. We spend all our time and resources just trying to manage our symptoms. With those words I made my complaint 15 years ago. It hasn't been a great 15 years. And that's got fuck all to do with MS. Yet I can't help wondering, what would I say to me 15 years ago that would reflect how it's been? It's a heck of a question. One I wouldn't normally have a chance to ask and answer. But because the article was published by an online journal, there I am, 15 years ago. It was a different time then. The Twin Towers' flames still charred our collective memory. Karen and my emotions were still raw from my first massive attack of multiple sclerosis, leaving me a wheelchair-bound invalid. Months of treatment, learning how to drink coffee from a straw, professional home care organized, Doctors, physical therapists, occupational therapists, our hopes finally cautiously optimistic. It was during that time that I wrote that article 15 years ago. What would I want me to know? Or what would I have liked to know? As I think back, I reflect that at that time 15 years ago, I'm fortunate to be unaware of not so much what MS would bring but what life has brought. I knew MS was kicking the shit out of me and expected the worst, but I didn't know how much life would hurt and how hard it would be. MS sucks, but life sucks worse. For example, I wouldn't necessarily tell me how heartbroken I was when Karen died. My LBF, lover and best friend, was gone. Everything we had hoped, everything we had shared, and everything we had planned was gone. I was shocked, stunned, paralyzed. The empty darkness of deep, profound, primal sorrow in slow motion consumed me for many months. But I would want me to know that though she passed and never saw me get out of that wheelchair, I did get out of it. You see, shortly after she was gone, I pushed that damn chair out of the way and made it to the toilet, first by crawling on the floor and then by doing the wall crawl. Tired of bruising my knuckles on the bedroom and then bathroom door frames as I wheeled my chair through them, desperate to reach the toilet, failing time after time, I gave up and crawled. The wall crawl, that is. I got out of the chair by getting out of the chair, by crawling along the floor, then along the wall until I was strong enough to no longer need the chair. Karen would have been so happy for me. There's so much we would have celebrated. She never saw me stand, yes, stand, in my backyard and howl at the moon in pure delight as my winter solstice fire burned down to glowing embers. She never saw the first time I danced again after years, and though she didn't see me fall in love again twice, she'd have been happy for me. She would have laughed at my antics, dancing in the snowstorms and my bonfires to the equinoxes. Karen and I fell in love on the dance floor. And though she would have celebrated with me, there were some things I'm glad she missed. She didn't see my mother die, or my niece die, or John, my best friend, die, or my son go to prison, or Don, our best man, disappear, probably dead in these tastings. And she didn't see my final foibles, 
Drug use was my refuge as I lost everything to the financial burden I bore to help fix the house so I could live in it after my health failed as we knew it would. She would have understood though. She wouldn't have judged me or kicked me to the curb like so many did during my darkest days. Yes, though I miss her terribly, I'm glad she missed the worst parts of my MS. For during the hell that can be life, I suffered the hidden parts of multiple sclerosis, the invisible horrors, the burning up and down my spine, the consistent searing hot poker jabs that interfered with my sleep, the resulting depression as night after night I lie awake, the psychotic episodes, the drugs, some prescribed but most not, in an endless, insane, useless attempt to stop the pain, to beat the fatigue, the UTIs, the ever-present mental and emotional confusion, finally the suicide attempt, the horror of the pit, and institutionalization. Karen would have cared while others would or could not. She would have laughed my laughs with me, cried my tears with me, screamed my screams with me, held me when the night terrors came. She cared, and she's gone. John cared, and he's gone. Don cared, and he's gone. So much loss, I am alone. MS took away from me my identity, that young, overachiever, jock-power-driven lawyer. Life stripped away what was left. And MS doesn't care. It sits quietly in the corner, watching, waiting. It continues to ebb and flow like the tide, in and out, up and down. Every year as the season, warm season changes to the cold of winter, I have an episode. This happens without failure. I'm going down, and there are only two questions I have to answer. How bad and how long? Oh yeah, and how much better will I get when it's done this time? If I could, I would tell me that simple fact because it is the only thing I can rely upon. Dennis, I'd say you're going to get sick every year as the weather gets cold. Really, really sick. But don't worry, I'd continue. If you use that stubborn, cantankerous, obstinate nature you've been blessed and cursed with, and the anger, use it, you'll be fine. Yeah, don't worry, you'll be fine. Don't worry. You'll be fine, unless you're not. So much uncertainty, no one knows how long she has, but usually we know we'll be okay, sort of. But people with MS don't know if they'll be okay. We don't know. We just don't fucking know. If I could, I'd tell that young man, torn down from the peak of his strength and youth, frightened by the infuriating, unknowable, that after everything I've been through and lost, I can still say, when my tide goes out for the last time, I'll be alone as we all are. Maybe I'll be more ready than those who've lost little. I don't know. Alone though I'll be, I wish to die well, knowing I fought MS until I could fight it no longer. And if there is one thing I could leave, it is this message to any who might chance to view my epitaph. I died free. I died free. Three tiny words that sum up everything I've hoped for worked for, and fought for. Karen would have liked that. And to my disease? Fuck you, MS. Karen would have liked that too. Dennis Robinson.